Hey everybody, it's Silvershim, and today, I have something very special for all of you. A while ago, I uploaded some videos of some animations of the planets that I created using the free 3D modeling software known as Blender. And today, I'm going to start going through my creations in detail while providing some information about the celestial bodies that they are modeled after. Now, a few things to go over before we begin. In all of the files in this project, the negative x direction, as you can see by here, this is the positive x direction, this is negative, that is the direction of the first point of Aries. Those of you familiar with celestial coordinates will know that the first point of Aries is used as zero degrees right ascension, right ascension being the celestial equivalent of longitude coordinates on the Earth. So this is zero degrees right ascension, some around here is 15 degrees, 30 degrees, you get the idea. Helpful for positioning. In addition, I use the XY plane, which is shown here, as a reference plane in these files. In this case, in my file with the whole solar system, this plane represents the ecliptic plane. That is the plane defined by Earth's orbit, and most of the planets orbit close to this plane. And for the sake of animation, one frame equals one day. At least by default, I'll probably change that for time remapping when I actually show off some animations. And also, frame zero, that will show the positions of the objects on January 1st, 2000, at the point where it is noon on the prime meridian. That is considered the start of the current epoch, the current 2000 epoch. So that's where I'll start. I can go into the negatives and the positives to show various times, and I'll be doing that later. Now without further ado, let's get into our first celestial body, right here. This may just look like your typical old blender sphere, but if I go into rendered mode, it represents the beautiful ball of light known as the Sun. Now the Sun is of course the star at the center of the solar system and the solar system's main source of heat and light. Its name comes from various old English words. Of course it's been known throughout the ages so it's been named several times over by several different languages. And of course, the proper adjective when referring to the sun is solar. That's why it's called the solar system. The sun is a G2V class star, and stars with that classification are often informally called yellow dwarfs, which isn't really accurate, since the sun is much closer to white than yellow. The sun and the rest of the solar system are about 4.6 billion years old, and it is believed to have around 5 to 6 billion years of life left. In terms of size, the sun is 14 million kilometers across, slightly less than that, as you can see here by dimensions. That is around 8.5 million miles, more than that, and it's about 109 times as wide as the Earth. As you can see here, I set the unit system to metric, 
and the units scale to the maximum of 100,000 in order to be able to use kilometers here. So that's how I'm able to get the sizes of these bodies as accurate as possible. And with the sun's massive size, it is capable of holding 1.3 million Earths inside of it, theoretically. Now, getting into animations, I have the sun set to rotate once in about 25 days. So, if we cut through this, once you get to around frame 25, it has, will have rotated all the way around. However, since the sun is not a solid body, it's burning gas, it actually goes through something we call differential rotation. It doesn't actually rotate like a uniform sphere. That 25-day rotation period is only at the equator. The poles take about 34 days to rotate, but I just went with 25 days to keep it simple. Now, if we go over here, you'll see that the sun is slightly tilted on its axis. It is tilted at about 7.25 degrees to the equator. With its size and mass, the sun has incredible gravity, which it uses to keep the solar system intact, and it has a powerful magnetic field protecting the solar system. So, that's my spiel on the sun. Next time in our journey through our Blender solar system, we will tackle the inner planets. See you then.